Enjoy your hike. Okay. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Hi there. How are you? Good. You got five minutes to chat before you do your hike? Only if I'm in the school. You know, the that's not a bad idea. Um, are you okay if I record it? Sure. Okay. Let me tell you what it's about. And uh, I'm, this is a good idea. I should have been in the shade before. Yeah. Awesome. What is your first name? Elba. E L B A? Yes. I'm Anthony. Hi, Anthony. Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So, I was just talking to that guy. We had a great chat. I, I talk with people for five minutes, and we we pick a topic, like something that you really think is true. Okay. Karma, God, magic, ghosts, something with politics. And uh, we just take, I just ask questions to understand why do you believe it. And sometimes, even in five minutes, the, the person I'm talking with might be less confident that the belief is true or just as confident and sometimes more confident. Okay. Is there a particular belief that you really think is true that you want to talk about hmm. before you do your beautiful hike in this uh, wonderful weather? Uh, sure, there's um, uh, intuition. Uh, uh, friendship. How about something supernatural? Give me an example. I mean... Karma. God. Do you believe in a God? I do believe in a supreme being or a, a divine guidance, infinite wisdom. Why? Because... I I just know I just know uh, does this it, God it's not something that you can sorry you ha I think you have it's something you have to experience it's just a knowing it's just uh, uh, something within within the self uh, I don't think everybody experience well I don't think everybody uh, is familiar with it or has given it time to uh, to present itself mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know that that's the correct word uh, I think we all have uh, it's like love if you you know people say I don't believe in God uh, or in some higher power but I think that if you believe in if you've ever experienced love whether it's your puppy dog or your children or a, a, a person you know that is love and so that is what God is to me God is love so whether it's love of nature there's your source there's your universe there's your you know does this God of love influence things is it watching you I, I think it's uh, omnipresent it is ever-present everywhere present uh, does it um, you know is it I don't know uh, am I the only focus of it uh, no I think we all are I think we all are in that that essence or we have that essence within us uh, you know we just sometimes we we experience it uh, or are more familiar with it than other times. Okay. Do you make decisions because you think this supreme being exists? Does it influence the decisions that you make in life? I think I do. Really? Yeah. Based on my uh, meditation, based on... Actually, that's what I'm here for. I'm here to connect with the, the divine, just to... And really, just to say thank you. For my wonderful this life. Way. How do you know, Elba, that you're just not talking to yourself and there really is this supreme being that's out there? I think it's because I've been in situations where I might not be here. And I listened to that inner voice and did something, did, you know, uh, and uh, I am now here. And what I mean by that, let me give you an example. Yeah, please. Uh, 
a few years ago, a few long time ago, I was in a in a car. I was I was in a car accident, and I could have been decapitated. Wow. I mean, we lost the you know. I ran into an eighteen like a big eighteen wheeler between the cab and the the back. So I went right in there, you know. Oh my goodness. And the car, the part of the car went was, was gone, you know, the top. So I could have been decapitated. And all I got was luck, right here, the little car on my chin. That's all I got. Uh -huh. uh, a few years later, one of my friends was involved in a motor vehicle accident. She was decapitated and her daughter died. So that's number one. Okay. Number two, I was actually driving, used to drive between Lubbock and Dallas a lot. I used to live in Dallas, and visited my friends in Dallas a lot. I was driving one one morning, almost past Fort Worth, and I'd driven that area almost into, I'm trying to remember what, Weatherford, into that area. And so what happened was that my car never had any problems with it. You know, everything got checked out before my trips and everything. And so I just had this feeling that something was going to, that wasn't right. You know, and I just said, and this is what I just basically said in my mind. Okay, God, if something's going to happen, you know, you know, let it be gently. And so what happened was that I lost one of my t my one of my tires blew or something. Mm. So my car kind of skidded, but it came to a stop. You know, uh, everything. You know, somebody actually strength, and it was cold. It was uh, drizzling, and it was a little bit of snow, and you know that kind of stuff because it was winterish or fall or whatever. And so I had somebody, I, I, I pulled on my pack, my, back, my backpack and was trying to figure out, okay, well, I know there's a uh, gas station a few miles that away. Because you always, you know, you know the road after a while. And so I thought, okay, well, let me put my backpack on and start walking over in that direction. Well, somebody stopped. It was an older man that was going to Weatherford to take his grandchild to the doctor. So he stopped and he said, I can take you to that gas station. And I have to take my grandson to the doctor over here. I'll take you to the gas station, drop you off. On my way back, I'll stop to make sure that you're okay. You know, and that's clearly really, that's what happened. So I w he drove me over there. They came, picked up my car. Uh, they it w it was hours before I got the tire, and so like a week later, you know, I traveled that road. Heard in the news that people were doing that same road, lost control, and all four passengers were killed. Mm. Um, same circumstances. Mm -hmm. You know. So you've so had two instances where you survive car accidents yes uh, and you recognize that not everybody does correct how many people annually die in car accidents in those same situations and survive them i don't know that i just hear about the ones that don't make it that, that's you always hear about that let me give you another instance well before you do because okay. i think this is important i think there's probably some that do i mean i've never you know, I haven't done the stats on that group. I've done, I, you always hear, you know, these were the circumstances, this was what happened. And, you know, when you, when it's something you're familiar with, then it's like, oh, did that road last, last month, you mm -hmm. know, or last week. This is the same road I traveled back and forth. You're, you're familiar with that particular situation or circumstances. So yeah. it's like you can identify with that. But what I want to kind of get to is if we were to, and I'm not an expert on this, by any means, but if somebody who worked for the Department of Transportation who was watching this video could say, I've got the stats on this, and we know 99% of the people that go under a semi truck and think they're going to be decapitated survive it. Like, there's enough time, they duck, and it's traumatic, uh, but some people do get killed. If you were to discover that you surviving it really wasn't, was quite common, would you still think that this supreme being existed? Yes. There's got to be a different reason why you think this God, this Supreme Being, exists. Well, sometime in, and this is, I guess this is, this is where I was going with that one. Uh, when I was about 18 or 19, one of my brothers was playing out in the snow and then got very, very sick, come from a large family. Uh, one of my brothers got sick, very, very sick, and so my parents took him to the hospital and so uh, they determined that he had meningitis. Mm. So then they wouldn't let us see him. Mm -hmm. Contagious. And so, and so Contagious and fatal. Yes. And so this is back in this, you know, what, late 70s, you know. And so then what happened was that he didn't make it. I'm sorry. Uh, 
And so it's really interesting because I, you know, was young. I didn't know that. I didn't know anything about medicine, of course, you know, but I knew that he wasn't going to make it. Just something told me. My best friend's grandfather was in the hospital. And so what happened was that we'd all spend, we'd all take turns going to see him and spending the night. We all took turns, everybody, you know. Can I just interject? Uh huh. Just to kind of, because time's brief and I want to get you on back on the trail, but you said that you, it sounded like you had a premonition or you were, you, you yes. made, you, you said, I think yes. he's going to die. Yes. And he did. And he did. If he didn't, would you be just as convinced the supreme being exists? Yes. Okay. Yes. So there must be another reason why you think this God exists. Because what happened is that when my, my best friend's grandfather was in the hospital and I went to vi we went to visit him and I had that same feeling that I had when I, was, when I went to see my brother. Mm -hmm. And so the best, thing, the best way that I can describe it is if you're, you know, if you're here, it's nice and a little warm, but then if you, go, if you walk into an air-conditioned room, there's a diff. you know, it's like from warm to hot. Mm -hmm. It's neither is good nor bad, it's just is. And that's exactly what happened. When I walked in his room, all of a sudden this thing came over me and it's like, oh, he's not gonna make it. He's, I had that same mm -hmm. feeling that I had when my brother, when I lost my brother David. And so I knew right away. I didn't tell anybody, but it's sure. just, you just- You don't want to upset anybody. Yeah. yeah. But do you ever have these feelings that someone's not gonna make it and they have, you got a little mosquito going around your head. Do you ever get these feelings and you think he's gonna die or he's gonna survive and it doesn't happen the way that you think that it is going to? Are you always correct? I'm always correct. You're always correct with your premonitions? Yes, with my, it's not a premonition, it's just a feeling. Feelings. Uh, it's just a feeling, it's just a knowing. It's hard to explain. And so it got so bad that I didn't want to have these feelings anymore. I wanted them to go away because I knew things before they were gonna happen. And I didn't want to know. Do you have, could we, uh, would you be willing to like go to a cancer ward with children and just kind of go down and like, no, yes, she's going to go tonight. This is what I do. When is, it, I, is, this, I, is this ability a testable? I, I don't know. I just know that my responsibility, and this is what happened. I'm, I'm a nurse actually. I turned, because of my brother, I became a nurse. And so I did hospice for a long time. And so what I just, and for the longest time I felt guilty because you've got babies dying. You've got, uh, 25 years with a couple of kids and you're like, oh my God, you know, I feel bad for them. But at one point in time, and it took me a long time to get through my brother's death, I felt like we're here for a certain period. We have, I don't know what, what, what you want to call it, like a spiritual contract or whatever it is. We have an agreement of some sort. And so we're going to be here for that period of time, whether it's six months or, or 14 years for my brother or whatever it is, and then you move on. It's time, you know, and nothing... You know, I think people have those what near-death experiences, and they come back. But I feel that my responsibility in those cases is just is just to put a light around them, and, and, and ex, you know, and then just uh, you know, that's it, just to put a light around them. And yeah. it's like accidents, or if you hear the ambulance, I just, I just in my mind, I put the light, light around them, or energy, or source, or whatever you want to call it, and then just you know, I don't interfere. But how do you know that these things are actually happening and happening in the way that you perceive them to be? Uh, how how can we how can we test this? If we were to go to the emergency ward or the cancer ward, and there were a hundred patients there, and we just had you walk down and just with a little clipboard, and would it, would, would you be a hundred out of a hundred if we were to look? I, I, I don't know, but I can tell you this: that when I was going to college, my friends would say, "Hey, Alba, we're going to party. We're going to go do this." Just come along and see what you feel, see what your senses are. Or some, some of my girls would say, you know, I'm dating John Doe. Tell me what you feel. Is this a good person or a bad person? You know, are they, are they well-meaning or do they... And I've always, ha you know, people have always come to me or my, the people that know me and know that piece of me will say, well, you know, I know that you know something that I don't necessarily know it, you know, and that's... And, and I would... In, in cases, I would say, you know what? I don't, the energy that I feel or whatever I'm feeling is that this person may not, doesn't necessarily, there's a lesson to be learned from every situation. So, and that's the way I take it, you know. 
Yeah. In, in these situations with your friends um, that come to you for advice and say, I don't know if they do it so much anymore, but do they? Do you get calls out of the blue from people? And I've got there, to follow there's up a, to There's a group of people that know that part of me. The people that I work with like now, they don't know. Would you love to be able to say the next time they call that I'd be glad to go with you because I actually met this guy you know, before I went on, my, on this hike the other day. We ended up going to the hospital and I was able to accurately predict the outcome of 100 young children that were dying of cancer, who would survive and who would not. I'm not Listen, saying that we're going to do this. I don't want to have that. I don't want to have, I don't want to be, I don't want to have that responsibility to say, you know, because... And well, wait, well, hold on. Wouldn't you want to know if you were actually giving your friends valid advice or not? Uh, I don't want to know that part. Uh, the, uh, the piece about valid advice, they know. They already know. They, they don't, you know, they don't question it or they don't, uh, they, they just, they just know. And I think... Let me ask you this. Given the choice of being able to keep it as is or to be able to say, I've got this report that actually investigated my abilities and I'm 100 for 100 on this. What would you prefer out of the two? I don't need to know. I'm fine the way the way it is. I, I had way too much gifts or, or you know, I mean, let me give you another example. I think we got plenty. Okay. You say that you don't need to know. I, I don't need to know that piece. I, I'm fine. I'm fine with where I'm at. I'm fine with that because I just, I just am. I've come to accept things, you know, as far as that's concerned. But are you accepting something that might not actually be true? Well, it's not harming me, let me put it that way. You know, now if it was something that was, that was harming me, like, you know, I don't know, drugs or, or, but it's not, you know, it, and it's not, uh, it's, it's just affecting me or not affecting me. Uh, so could it be harming your friends? I don't think so because I don't, you know, I don't give advice unless I'm asked. And then when I do do it, I use very, I'm very, you know, gentle. You know, I mean, uh, I, I'm not. I mean, uh, I just don't feel like. Uh, and I'm not here to, 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 to judge anybody and say, well, you know, you're going to make it, you're not going to make it. That's not my decision. It's just my, you know, if I have a feeling, then I just know. That's it. And that's, that it, that's okay. all it is. So it sounds like you said that you don't need to know. Correct. But if it could be shown to be conclusively true, would you want to know? No. I would not. I'm fine. I'm fine the way I am. I'm fine the way th the way things are. Can I run into you again? Sure. Okay. Um, do you come to this trail a lot? I do. I really enjoyed that talk. It was, it was a lot different than the talks that I normally have. Okay. And My name's Anthony. Okay, Anthony. Yeah, it's really a pleasure. How All far right. do you go? Uh, it just really varies. Yeah. You know. Okay. Just. All know, right. Just had Indian food, so I was grateful for. You know. Are you Indian? I am not. Okay. <laughs> Hispanic? What is your nationality? Uh, mixture. Okay. All right, Anthony. All right, very nice time chatting with you. Take care. Bye bye. Holy moly. Oh, whoa. That was really an interesting talk. The confirmation bias that she had was palpable. This talk was good because it was quite different than the talks that I normally have with people. Her admission that she doesn't need to know and she doesn't want to know if she really has this ability or not was shocking to me. So if I do run into her again, I think the conversation will have to talk, talk about 
whether it's a good idea for people to want to go through life believing things that are true or not. So um, I'm optimistic that I'm going to run into her again and we can keep the talk going. Uh, she was very quick to keep rattling off examples, which uh, I wanted to get examples from her, but I also didn't want her to dominate the conversation because I know a lot of you are watching and, and probably pulling your hair out. Well, I had to interject here and there to keep her on track and cut her off and say, well, I think we've got enough examples. I'm thinking that I probably should have given her a homework assignment, but I'm kind of scratching my head as far as what that would be because she seemed content in her, in her ambiguity.